So we've mentioned the vector, uh, by definition, indicates magnitude and direction. Um, so one way to indicate direction we noticed was sort of the slope of the line. And when it, a vector is in component form, then the component form indicates the direction by telling you how you move right and then left. And the slope that you can get very easily from that. Um, but another way to describe direction, as we should all know, is, is using angles, right? So the direction angle of a vector is defined to be the angle theta that a vector u makes with the positive x-axis. So here's a vector. Let's call this vector u. It's sort of out here in, in no man's land. Um, if I want to know the direction, the direction angle of this vector, then I'm going to situate it uh, on the positive x-axis. So again, all these vectors that I'm moving around, remember, they're all the same. So I'm just, but I'm going to move it there. OK, so the direction angle then, by definition in the picture, is it's the angle that this vector u, vector u makes with the positive x-axis. Well, here's the positive x-axis. So the angle it makes is right there. It's called theta. OK, and so let's say, let's say that the, the head of this vector is right here at the point x comma y. Well, then that means I can write my vector. So, so what does this vector do? Again, ignore the units just for this picture. They're not really uh, necessary. This vector moves you, well, since that's the point x comma y, uh, it moves you x units right. Just try to get in a triangle here. It moves you x units right and y units up. So the, the component form of this vector is x, y. So notice the subtle difference here. This is the point x comma y, and because of where we situated u, the vector in component form is also called x comma y. OK, now, so there's our direction angle. Now, we'll often be interested, because depending on how the information is given to us, we'll want to be able to go back and forth between a vector described indicating its direction as an angle and component form. So there's our direction angle. What we want is a way to figure out what x and y are if all I'm given is the direction angle and the length of the vector. So so the length of the vector would be described by that, that expression there, right? the magnitude of the vector. So one way we could describe the direction of the vector is I could say it's, you know, it's 10, it uh, has 10 units long and its, and its direction angle is 50 degrees. That's enough information for you to determine exactly what the vector looks like, everything you need to know about the vector. But what if we wanted to turn it into component form, this form right here? Because we noticed how easy it is to add and, and scale vectors when they're in component form. So, so how do we do that? Well, uh, it's actually really easy. Look at this right triangle here and notice that the cosine of angle theta is equal to x over the hypotenuse, which is the absolute value u. And that means if you multiply both sides by the absolute value of u, x equals the absolute value of u. times cosine of theta. And similarly, in the picture, the sine of the angle is y over the magnitude of u. And if you multiply those sides by the magnitude of u, So what does this tell us? Why is this helpful? It's helpful because if all I give you is the direction angle and the magnitude, you now can write the vector in component form using these relationships. So in other words, we already know that this vector can also be written as in component form x 
y, but if we want to know what x and y are, and we're just given the direction angle and the magnitude, well, the x coordinate and the x component is the magnitude times cosine of theta. And the y component is the magnitude times the sine of theta. So this is important. It's important because if our vector is given uh, is is given to us by describing the angle, the direction angle, and the magnitude. We can recover uh, the, re the component form just by multiplying the magnitude times cosine of theta to get the x component, and the magnitude times the sine of theta to get the y component. Okay. In the next video, we'll do we'll do an example of that.